Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Friday Lunch Facebook Live. This is Judge Jennifer Bruner, and I'm here with Judicial Candidate Marie Lane, who is running for the Common Pleas Court General Division in Ashtabula County, Ohio. Hi, Marie, how are you doing? Hi, Judge, nice to be with you. It's a pleasure. Likewise. Now, if anybody wonders in Ohio where Ashtabula County is, it's in the far northeast corner of the state. Um, yep, very top right, right, uh, right hand corner. We, our borders are Lake Erie and Pennsylvania. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Asheville County is geographically the largest county in the state. Oh, how interesting. I've driven there and there's some beautiful countryside there. And um, you are fortunate to be on a lake because in Franklin County, where I come from, we have the Olentangy and the Scioto River, and we're flat. So, um, so, so Marie, you've been an attorney since what year? Ninety-one. Ninety-one. Wow. And then, um, and you were the chief public defender in Ashtabula County. Um, um, yes, I, I started my career. I graduated uh, from Cleveland Marshall in ninety-one, and I uh, took that summer July bar and and passed it. And, was sworn in and not too long after that I started um, as an assistant public defender in the Stark County Public Defender's Office and then in November of 98 I moved to Asheville County um, when I had what uh, was appointed to the position of director of the Asheville County Public Defender's Office. Oh so that you must have competed with a lot of people to get that position because you were coming from Stark County. Well I I I believe I did compete with a lot of people. Um, I wanted I wanted this position very badly. I, I saw it as a means of being able to operate my own program and do great things uh, for county. And I was very excited to get the position and I have loved every minute of it ever since. So 22 years with the public defender, right? As the public defender. Y'all, November will be 22 years that I've been here, yes. Oh, that's fantastic. So you have quite a bit of experience to prepare you to serve as a common pleas judge, it sounds like. I am, in, I am in that courtroom every day. I have a lot of litigation experience. I, I have well over 100 jury trials. I, you know how it is, Judge, with her public defender's office. We are on the front lines. We're in the courtroom every day fighting for the constitutional rights of the citizens um, of our communities. And I am very prepared for that position of judge for, for common pleas. So uh, you and I have something in common, and that is our love of drug courts. Um, I started the TIES program, Treatment is Essential to Success program in Franklin County in 2004, which is still operating today. And um, tell us about your work with the drug court in Ashtabula County. Well, um, like, like you, Judge, you started your drug court. We realized back in 2008 that we were not going to jail our way uh, out of uh, the drug epidemic that were going on. And at that time, it was methamphetamine. So myself, um, as the chief public defender, and then common pleas judge, Judge Alfred Mackey, um, and then uh, County Prosecutor Tom Sartini, along with our chief probation officer and the director of our one of our treatment agencies, Catherine Kinney, we sat down and decided that we were going to form the first drug court here in Nashville County, the Nashville County Court of Common Pleas Felony Drug Court Program. So we started it in 2008 and it's still going strong today. So, you know, I noticed um, when, I, and when I started the drug court in Franklin County, the deputies would all come, the sheriff's deputies would all come into the courtroom at the beginning and say, well, it's party time. And a lot of people thought that drug courts were like going soft on criminals. Um, you know, we ended up later kind of sort of changing the whole view of the deputies. In fact, they would tell me about someone who I had to put in jail for testing dirty um, and let me know how they were doing, which I thought was, was really very, very sweet. And it came to be that they liked to come to the, the drug court sessions because they were really interested in how people were doing. Um, what do you find has been the, 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 how has it changed people's views about, about crime in Ashtabula County? Well, when, when the community really started to understand how intensive the program is, I mean, understanding that the participants start off coming to court every week to see the judge, that they call in every day about being drug tested and we randomly drug test everybody a minimum uh, of twice a week. 
um, that there's, you know, the supervision from the probation department, the, the treatment, the employment services, when the community, including law enforcement, really under, under started to understand that it's no cakewalk, that it is an intensive program designed with evidence-based practices designed to get the low-level nonviolent offenders out of the system. And once um, community business uh, men and um, businesses and community and law enforcement really understood that, the program really took off. We are so lucky to have so many uh, employers in this county who are willing to give our participants a second chance at employment because they, a lot of them don't, never had that opportunity because of their felony convictions. So it really, people understood what it's really about. They really embraced it. And, and that's fantastic. And I know when I was a trial judge, I felt like the drug court, the ties program was the best thing that I, I did in my daily work. Um, and, but it seems, you know, you and I were talking about before our session today, you, you actually are kind of known around the state for your work. Um, tell us a little bit about your connection with the Ohio Supreme Court and what you do for the state in the capacity of um, working with drug courts and criminal justice. Well, I currently am the, the defense attorney representative on the Commission for Specialized Dockets uh, for the Supreme Court. We actually started out as an advisory committee back in 2011. I was appointed as the defense attorney representative by then Chief Justice Moyer to serve on the advisory committee. And so I had a seat at the table when we were writing Superintendent's Rule 36.2 and developing the standards that guide all the specialized docket courts in Ohio. And then once the, the advisory committee was converted into the Commission of Specialized Dockets, again, there is one defense attorney representative, and I have been very honored to have been appointed and been that representative um, since the beginning in 2013. Oh, that's, that's very interesting. Um, so uh, explain to people what recidivism means. Recidivism is, when, um, is reoffending, essentially. So when somebody comes into the system, the goal is to set them up with the services they need to tackle the issues that led them into um, committing, uh, committing the criminal offense in the first place. Was it a substance abuse issue? What is the mental health issue? Was it housing or food insecurity? What is it that led that individual to commit the offense that's now in our justice system? If we can get to low level nonviolent offenders early and give them the evidence-based practice services that deal with those underlying issues, we can get them out of the system and um, prevent recidivism, meaning that we, as the justice system, won't have contact with them again, that they won't reoffend. And, I, you know, I've, I, I did a lot of the training that I know you've been through, and I remember talking to, at a conference, to one uh, former criminal offender who said to me something I never forgot. She said, you know, they got me for one thing, but there were 10 things they never got me for. Yep. So if, if you get one offender out of that path or that circle of recidivism, you probably stop a lot more crime than just that one offense that they didn't, that, that, that they finally got it right for. Oh, and absolutely. And not only that, but chances are that that particular offender probably has children. And Asheville County, like many communities, has a problem with genera um, generational cycle of um, becoming into the justice system. So if you can get that person early and if they can get them out of the system, you have broken a cycle, which could have led to a next generation um, of offenders as well. And Because my understanding is that a lot of people that go into the criminal justice system come from a background of poverty. And kind of one of the things that, that people in poverty, actually not everyone, but some get used to is the fact that you spend a certain amount of time in jail. Do you think I'm right about that? Well, I would agree with that. But the interesting thing I think about the opioid uh, epidemic, it, it really, really hit all classes. It really changed, um, I think, the community perspective of treatment as opposed to pure punishment because it really did reflect all classes. I had, um, I've had many clients um, with substance abuse issues because of the opioids that um, they, they came from um, middle, upper middle class families. 
And because of it just raced across so many classes that it really kind of changed the perception of let's do treatment and not just lock people up. Now that's that. I guess that's a silver lining to something that's been a real scourge on our state. Um, so you've got the opioid ep epidemic that didn't go away, and now we have COVID nineteen. And um, are are you seeing anything different because of COVID nineteen and the opioid epidemic? I mean, you said you've been doing hearings, but how how is that all affecting your work? Well, as far as drug court, we didn't miss a beat. We conduct our weekly team meetings via Zoom, just like we're doing now. And the judge conducts the, the weekly court hearings via Zoom. And all the participants um, participate just as they normally do, except via video. So we, the judge was very committed, as well as myself and every other member of the team, of not you know, dropping the ball for our participants. Because we know, I mean, this, was a this has been a stressful time for everybody. But now, you know, with maybe pending criminal charges and a substance abuse issue and maybe already some underlying mental health issues like depression and anxiety, this is a very difficult time. So we felt it very important to keep up the support system. I can tell you that all the participants are still being drug tested um, every week. They're still attending all their groups. It's just, you know, in a different fashion. They're doing all their sober support meetings. Again, still different, different fashion. Um, probation's checking on them all the time. It's different, but the support is still there. Oh, that's fantastic. So um, campaign-wise, um, if I understand this correctly, you are running for an open seat. The judge that um, is leaving is basically, it, and so, but that judge is the, is the drug court judge, isn't it? He is the drug court judge, and I, um, it is my dream to um, become eventually the, the, drug, the drug court judge. I, I, I believe, um, judge, in the, the specialized docket model. Um, I have had the honor, of not only because of my uh, position with the Supreme Court on the uh, Specialized Docket Commission, I became connected with the National Drug Court Institute and the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. And I'm actually a faculty member for them now. So I have been traveling uh, across the country, um, providing training to other drug courts around the, the, the country. Um, this past um, uh, fall for our Ohio Specialized Docket Conference, I spoke at three different breakout sessions and I did the legal updates for Ohio judges, prosecutors, and defense counsel. I was supposed to speak at the Arkansas State Conference, but that got canceled because, uh, or at least postponed um, because of what's going on. Um, but um, next week, well, in a couple weeks, rather, I'm going to be participating via Zoom with a drug court in Texas, uh, providing them training via Zoom. So I believe in the model. I know it works. Um, the evidence-based evidence practices involved in treatment courts expand throughout the entire justice system, so not just for people who are in drug court. So I um, am, it is my dream to take over our common pleas drug court, which I have found, helped to found in 2008. That's so exciting. Well, so so how do you how do you sort of turn the Queen Mary? How do you with with, with campaigning under COVID nineteen? Um, how are you overcoming some of the challenges so that people can get your message out? Well, it, it has it has changed things. I will tell you, I it was what was my goal to knock on fifteen thousand doors. In fact, the first weekend in January, I started to do that and started going to houses and um, of voters in Asheville County where you have to drive to anyway. And I made it through the first weekend in March until our national uh, emergency. And I, th at that point, I had hit 1,500 doors. That's good. So I'm not going to be able to do that. I mean, hopefully, we'll get back to a point where it will be safe for, for everybody, for me to come and, and knock on their door and be able to talk to them in person. So I am looking at other ways to make that personal contact um, with the voters, and this is one of them. So I appreciate the opportunity, Judge, um, to do this. Well, I, I'm so glad to, I, I feel like I get to Zoom to different parts of the state, and um, I, I'm you know, so impressed with the dedication and the um, experience and the, the passion that people like you have for the judiciary and for the work that we do in the judicial branch to serve the public and protect them and keep life predictable for them by upholding the rule of law. 
Um, oh, oh, ab oh, absolutely. The, you know, in a community, uh, in a county so diverse as Asheville County, again, we're the largest uh, county geographically, but we only have a population of less than 100,000 people. So we have a very diverse group of citizens, and it's the county judicial system that really connects the community together. Um, and um, it's that sense of community, that knowing that no matter where they're from in the, in the county, um, that they're going to be heard and they're going to be treated with respect and the law is going to be applied to them fairly. And so no matter what the differences we have in this county, um, that in, and maybe they may not be happy with the outcome of their case, but if they felt that they were treated fairly and they were heard, um, then that they have more respect for our, our county system. So it really has the, keeps the community together as our, our county court system. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, Marie, we will stay in touch during the campaign and I'm sure we'll be doing one of these again. Um, I'm so pleased to learn so much about what's going on in Ashtabula County and about your campaign. And um, I do wish you the very best. Thank you so much and the best to you as well. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.